Folks, the American League Championship Series is now set. The Indians eliminated the Red Sox today at Fenway Park. So it's the Tribe against the Yankees beginning at Yankee Stadium Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on NBC. Harry Wood back to work as we move to the fifth. Walt Weiss is singled and lined back to the box. One and one. Wood is right on his usual strikeout pace. He spanned five through the first four innings. The latest of the Texas-born strikeout kings, joining Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan. Here's his 2-2 pitch to Weiss. Fouled away. As a 14-year-old, Kerry Wood attended the seventh and last no-hitter of Nolan Ryan's career. Ryan was pitching for the Texas Rangers against the Blue Jays that night in 1991. Full count. And he's kind of a humble individual, Bob, and in that when people started comparing him to Nolan Ryan and Roger Clemens, you know, he said, hey, it's too early and I don't want to hear talk like that. Wrapped to first, it comes up for Grace. He takes it himself. Bob, what happened to Kerry Wood this year often happens to a lot of young pitchers. They pitch in the minor leagues and they're on a pitch count. They pitch six innings, five innings. Then they get to the big leagues and they start to become a starter every fifth day. And when they get up around 150 innings, they, their arms usually get tired or they get an injury. They develop soreness. And that has happened to a lot of young pitchers. And they're usually able to overcome it as their arms get stronger. A ball and a strike to Lockhart, who's 0 for 2. But they have him on such a strict pitch count when you're in the minor league. You do not pitch much, you know, many innings. And then you get here and you're pitching tons of innings and it just catches up with you. Braves have three hits off Wood. Cubs have managed two against Maddox. One nothing Atlanta. Three balls and a strike. Nobody up yet in the Chicago bullpen. Wood is at 90 pitches right now. His 91st is popped into left. And it's Rodriguez there to take it. Here's the latest information on Darryl Strawberry. He underwent five hours of surgery today in New York. They removed a portion of his upper intestine. They say they found no evidence of the spread of cancer. They removed the malignant tumor. He is resting comfortably right now. And that's great news. With two out and nobody on, here's Chipper Jones. He's flied out and singled. Well, if they let Kerry Wood work the sixth inning, he'll go past 100 pitches. He's in the low 90s right now. Well, part of the plan for today was to see how he was feeling after he got to a certain point. And I guess Jim Riggleman will ask him how he feels when he comes in. And there's Phil Regan, the pitching coach. They will ask him how he feels if he gets out of this inning and decide whether they're going to send him out there again for the seventh inning. They're starting to stir now in the Cub bullpen. And on four pitches, Jones draws a two-out walk. 
Wood is scheduled to be the fourth hitter in the bottom half of the fifth. The one thing I've noticed is when he, you see, Heredia, Felix Heredia starts to throw in the cup bullpen. But the one thing I've noticed about him, he's a very smart pitcher in that if he falls behind, he fell behind Chipper Jones then and he decided he wasn't going to give in. He fell behind Andres Galarraga in the first inning and he didn't give in. I think he's trying to make sure that he keeps his team in the ballgame. He's not going to throw any 3-1 pitches that these sluggers can hit out of the ballpark. Riggleman out to talk with him, and this is just a talk. Arady has only been throwing for a few seconds, and you're not going to bring in a left-hander here to face Galarraga. Strikeouts. He got one in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and he got two in the fourth. He's walked four, one of them intentionally. Galarraga has one of each. Walked in the first, struck out in the third. He has a definite game plan with Galarraga. He's trying to throw the fastball on the inside corner and then try to get ahead so he'll chase the breaking ball. He struck him out with a 3-2 breaking ball in the third inning. The 1-0. A towering fly ball in the left center field. Coming in is Johnson, and Lance Johnson makes the catch. No runs, no hits, a walk, a man is left. To the bottom of the fifth in Chicago, 1-0 Atlanta. Sleek. Sophisticated. Stylish. And yet with an exhilarating V6. Chevy Monte Carlo lets you express that hidden part of your personality. Just dying to get out. Mr. Freeman. How are you? Tommy. Monte Carlo. The side you show the world is up to you. Mexican pizza. Crispy tortilla shells. Luscious tomatoes and a mouth-watering blend of cheeses. Mexican pizza. Crispy tortilla shells. Luscious tomatoes and a mouth-watering blend of cheeses. I think I'm in love. Right now, get a crunchy, cheesy Mexican pizza for only 99 cents when you buy a large drink. That's over a buck off. Better hurry. A soldier shows no mercy. A soldier needs no friend or family. Soldier, Rated R. Starts Friday, October 23rd. When you give a solitaire, you say more. And you say it with more brilliance. More depth. More fire. The Diamond Solitaire. A diamond is forever. De Beers. In two weeks, the season premiere of The Pretender. The man who can be anyone returns with something missing. His mind. It's a mad, mad world. Is he crazy or crazy like a fox? What's your last name? It changes every week. The Pretender. Season premiere. NBC Saturday in two weeks. Gaetti, Houston, and Hernandez in the bottom of the fifth. If anybody gets on, the pitcher's spot would be due. Terry Mulholland is throwing now in the Chicago bullpen. Strike one. Heredia was up earlier. 
I believe what Riggleman was thinking was that if Galarraga had reached, he would have brought in the left-hander Heredia to try to get Klesko out. And that would have been Heredia's only batter if everything went according to plan. If they got a man on, they would have hit for Heredia in the bottom half, then brought in Mulholland, who is better suited to work a longer stretch. Now we'll see what happens if Wood's turn comes up in this inning. Two and one to Gaetti. That'll make the seats. And let's take a look at the way that Gary Gaetti sprays his hits around the field. That 57 to left, which basically says that he's pretty much a pull hitter. But part of that is because they throw him a lot of breaking balls, so he has to pull the ball. It gets through Maddox and into center field. A leadoff single for Gaetti. And Maddox has stayed away from Gaetti this entire ball game. This is a pitch out away, and Gaetti reaches out and hits it right back through the middle. He didn't try to pull it, just went right back through the middle with it. Here's the catcher, Tyler Houston. Five-year-old Jim Riggleman. Never got higher than AAA as a ball player, primarily a third baseman. Houston rolls it foul. Asked Riggleman before the game about his greatest influences. George Kissel, who's something of a guru for years and years, decades, really, in the Cardinal organization. He said influenced him greatly. And Whitey Herzog, he coached for Whitey sometime back in St. Louis. Houston has to skip away from it, one and one. Riggleman said he never saw anybody who ran a ball game in a shrewder fashion than Whitey Herzog. People have always thought of Whitey as being very crafty. 1-1 one, one pitch from Maddox to Houston. Earl Weaver was always a proponent of pitching defense and a three-run homer. And Whitey Herzog always liked to use pitching and speed and defense to win his ball games. He, all, he used to say speed never has a slump. Different teams, too, that usually played on turf. The right. Royals in Kansas City and the Cardinals before they put the grass back in in St. Louis. Inside, two and two. And Maddox wanted that pitch. He thought he had the inside corner on Tyler Houston. It just hit the outside corner, and he tried to go back inside. It looked like Maddox was a lock for his fifth Cy Young Award until late in the year when he faltered just a bit. He strikes Houston out. Now most folks are thinking that Trevor Hoffman, who had a great year out of the San Diego bullpen, will take the Cy Young Award in the National League. Let's take a look at how Eddie Perez sets up behind the plate. Look at this pitch. Here's the first pitch to Tyler Houston. And now here's the second pitch. He's on the inside corner. Back out. Back in. And this is the way Greg Maddox pitches. And very few pitchers can do that. Use just the corner of the plate. Bob, I'll have to discuss that Cy Young Award with you. Here's Hernandez. I, I agree that Trevor Hoffman has had a fantastic season. But I believe that the Cy Young Award is meant for a starting pitcher who pitches 200, 300 innings, I mean 200 plus innings, to go out. Whereas you have 
Trevor Hoffman pitching about 70 innings the entire season and he goes out and saves the ball game. And true, I mean, like I say, it's had a fantastic year. I'm not taking that away from it. I think the Fireman Award is for mm -hmm. firemen. I think the Cy Young Award is for starting pitchers. And I don't believe starting pitchers should be most valuable players in the league. I think there I think there are awards for everyone and those awards should be awarded accordingly. I mean, I can't you take a guy like Greg Maddox or Glavin or Kevin Brown who go out there and pitch 200 and you know 50 innings the entire season. You know, to me that's what the Cy Young Award is all about. Harry Wood is done. Grant Brown is in the on deck circle. He'll be the pinch hitter. At the very least, if you don't say that a pitcher can't be, there's Brown, the pitcher can't be the MVP or a relief pitcher can't be the Cy Young, then the thinking ought to be, unless there right. is no outstanding candidate among everyday players or yeah. among starting pitchers, all things being equal, you go with the everyday player right. for the MVP over a pitcher and for the starting pitcher for the Cy Young over a reliever. Correct. But I, and I can understand why Trevor Hoffman is getting a lot of, you know, play and, and he may win. He's had a fantastic season. Cute little move there by <laughs> Greg Maddox, wasn't it? <laughs> Few fans hollering for a balk, but they get no satisfaction because it wasn't. He stepped off with his back foot first. Hernandez struck out his first time up. Lines this one foul and sends them scattering in the Atlanta bullpen. Starting to bother me a little bit though, Bob. We're agreeing on too many things here. I don't know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that is cause for alarm. Yes. <laughs> on your part, not mine. <laughs> on both of our parts. <laughs> That's out of play. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Kerry Wood pitched well. Right now he trails Maddox 1-0. This went almost exactly according to plan for Wood, Riggleman, and the Cubs. And had not Tyler Houston been guilty of a pass ball, we might be in a scoreless duel right now. Or Rodriguez had a, you know, broken for the plate on that chopper. They may be ahead one to nothing. So they made two mistakes that have hurt them. Another foul out of play. Kerry Wood worked five innings. He threw 97 pitches. Allowed one run, three hits, walked four, struck out five. And everyone in Chicago can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that the young fellow's healthy again. Now when it comes to rookie of the year, right, there is no distinction between pitchers and everyday players. So what do you think? What are the Cubs or Helton of the Rockies? I think that's another toss-up. I think that's that's a difficult one as well because I can't get you to commit here. No, I mean I, look, you're always gonna get me to kind of side with the hitter because I think hitting is the hardest thing to do in any sport. I mean, hitting a baseball. The 2-2. Two -two. A bouncing ball toward the hole and through. Gaetti to second base and no further than that. So singles by Gaetti and Hernandez set the stage for Brant Brown. Well, this is good hitting here by Hernandez. He goes behind the runner, well, right in front of Gaetti, but he hits to the right side and he finds the hole over there. Big hole on the right side. And I think Greg Maddox and Perez started to talk there because I think they were a little out of sync there. I think Maddox may have wanted to come inside and Perez wanted to go away. And then going away, that ball was hitting the hole to right field. So they had a little quick discussion at the mound. Now here's Brant Brown, hit 291 with 14 homers for the year. Foul back, pretty good pinch hitter. 
six for 21. That's 286 coming off the bench. And Bob, when the Cubs beat the Giants last Monday to get into the playoffs, Brown said he was the happiest guy in the whole world. He was happier than any Cub fan, any Cub, anyone. He said, I'm the happiest. The drop fly ball in Milwaukee, as it turned out, didn't matter. At least when it was all over. It hung over their heads for a week, though. And you have to give them a lot of credit. I mean, they they were able to hang on and get into a playoff with the Giants and beat them here in Wrigley Field. That could have been just devastating. They could have lost five or six in a row, as the Mets did down the stretch. Gaetti at second. Hernandez at first. 0-2 the count to Brown. Hit towards short. Weiss to Lockhart. They get one and nothing more than that. Hernandez coming in hard. First and third now with two out. Well, the ball was hit off the end of the bat first, and then Weiss did not give him a real good toss, and Lockhart waited at the bag for the ball. So you see it hit off the end of the bat. Now Weiss is tossed draws him inside. See, that ball is too far inside. If it was straight at him, then Lockhart could have come across the bag and avoided the runner. That's also what Maddox does to you. Gets ahead of you 0-2, then he forces you to protect the plate and just kind of poke at a pitch like that that you can't do much with. It's up to Lance Johnson. He's flied to deep center and was out trying to drag a bunt for a hit. Lance hit 280 for the season. Bob, in this day and age when everyone uses a thin handle bat and 31 or 32 ounces and tries to get the ball in the air, Lance Johnson is just the opposite. He's kind of a throwback. He uses a 40 ounce bat and he swings it from the end. two and one Bobby Coxie says he never gets relaxed until the season is over and hopefully they've won something just off the corner Well, anytime you see Greg Maddox walk down towards the plate like that, he thinks that he got part of the plate. But let's take a look at Perez. He reaches out and catches it and pulls it in. That's the ball. Now the 3 1. In there. So Brown will be running off of first. Gaetti is at third. Two out, bottom of the fifth. 1-0 Atlanta. And a 3-2 pitch coming from Maddox to Lance Johnson. In the air to right, Michael Tucker almost in his tracks. They leave two. And Maddox holds on to his 1-0 lead through five. Matt, got your email. Vancouver? Genius. Pass it on to Epps. He's running it through the Northwest. Hey, Matt. Ideas are hitting the Northwest. I've got purchasing checking suppliers. Uh-uh. We -uh. want it up top. Client briefing. Your Vancouver idea. Want to take your business to the next level? Citizens, I regret to inform you that despite our noble efforts, stores throughout the entire nation continue to distribute Reebok DMX. This moving air system adapts to your stride, enhancing individuality and personal comfort. To stand in them is to stand against conformity. Done. Looking forward. 
to the drive home. Stop commuting. Start driving. Introducing Alero. Alero, my Oldsmobile. Start something. Introducing new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay on the phone 20 hours a week. And get a pasty complexion. Flabby body. And, and a great, great new nickname, nickname at school. Exercise lately. Sometimes, getting away with murder is worse than getting caught. The timeless classic comes to life on NBC. Crime and Punishment, NBC, one week from Sunday. Terry Mulholland on now to start the sixth. In relief of Kerry Wood, first man to face him, Ryan Klesko, who struck out and flied out against Wood. Mulholland has been ever available to Jim Riggleman down the stretch. Used out of the bullpen, used as a starter. Through 121 pitches on Sunday at the end of the regular season against Houston, then came back and got them an out in the Monday wildcard playoff game here at Wrigley against the Giants. Down the stretch, it seemed pretty apparent that Jim Riggleman had a lot of confidence in Mulholland and Beck but not a lot of the uh, in, a, in the other people in the bullpen two and two to Klesko Mulholland is 35 he was six and five this year his ERA was under three former Mariner Giant Philly Full count. But it was 3-0 and as a starter down the stretch for the Cubs. And that was where he was successful. He's always had good control. Here's the payoff pitch. And he strikes Plesko out. Foul tip back into Houston's glove. Let's take a look at tomorrow's baseball schedule. Well, it's confusing, isn't it? Well, if, if, the, if I guess it all depends on this ball game. Yes, if, it does. If the Cubs win, then there will be a game on Fox and a game on ESPN. If the Cubs lose, only a game on Fox. And it'll be the Astros and the Padres. Correct. Ball one to Andrew Jones. Guys, one to center. Lance Johnson has it lined up. Two outs in the Atlanta sixth. We know for sure where we'll be on Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. Game one, Indians and Yankees in the ALCS. It's a lot less confusing when we move to the league championship <laughs> yes. series. All the National League games this year are on Fox. And all the American League games are on NBC. Correct. So we have the Yankees and the Indians. Indians went up to Boston and won two ball games. Trailing 1-0 on the Nomar Garcia para home run. They came back to beat the Red Sox today and avoid meeting Pedro Martinez in a game five. Good breaking ball from Terry Mulholland. Gaetti backs up at third, fires across the diamond, takes care of Eddie Perez, and Mulholland works a 1 2 3 6. Another day begins in Europe. 
and as it does, American Airlines will touch down in 11 European cities, in nine different countries. So whether it's business or pleasure that brings you to Europe, fly the airline that can have you there as early as tomorrow morning. American Airlines, something special to Europe. I'm not looking through the doorway at someone. I'm looking through the Onnet port. Port of entry to a seamless global network. A network that will change the fortunes of countless companies and the lives of thousands of telecom managers and CIOs. I see them out there right now. They seem rather happy. Onnet from MCI Worldcom. My mom's a bank person. Fire me. My dad has this real important job with this big fancy office where he's the boss. He always eats lunch at these big fancy restaurants. And after he's done saving the world, we go home and play. I'd give him a chance. I drew a picture of you. The 1999 Camry. Even heroes need a car. <laughs> Give me a road. Give me a car. Give me an opponent. And I will race him. I will show him who has more heart in the corners, who has a heavier foot in the streets, and who has a greater thirst for champagne. The race is on. He's waited longer than any human has ever waited for an alien. I'll be right back. Wednesday, the wait is over. I'm taking a personal day. But the shift's over in 10 minutes. I said I'm taking a personal day. <gasps> Dom and Sally's big night. We wanted to make sure that you had protection. Only Third Rock, NBC, Wednesday. Maddox back to work in the bottom of the six. Mickey Morandini to face him. Strike one, new left fielder. Quest go out. And Danny Bautista in for defense. Back to the mound. Maddox throws Morandini out. That brings up Sosa, who's lined out and struck out and is two for nine in the series so far. Well, he went the other way in the first inning. He hit the ball hard, but the wind held it up. And Michael Tucker ran it down in right center field. Then he tried to go that way again, but he strikes out on a great pitch from Greg Maddox. The Braves also have a new right fielder. Gerald Williams is in right field. He'll bat fifth. Bautista, the new left fielder, will hit eighth. On to Sammy. It's sharply to short. Weiss throws him out, and Sammy's 0 for 3. Well, Greg did not get that pitch where he wanted. That ball was up and over the middle of the plate. Sammy hit it hard, but he hit it right at the shortstop. Uh, watch where the catcher sets up. See, he's set up outside, and watch where this pitch is. Moves right back into the middle of the plate and up. And Greg is kind of lucky he got that one back. Mark Grace still looking for his first hit of the series. 0 for 10 now. Grounded out and flied out in this game against Maddox. One and one. Mark hit 309 for the year with 17 homers and 89 RBIs. Right center field, well hit. Gerald Williams on the run, gets there. That is a strong wind out there right now, Bob. 
Yeah, he hit that ball pretty well. Gerald Williams just inserted for defense, ran it down. One nothing after six. 